Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. This fourth week in Easter, also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Our opening hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, hymn number 711. I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul and leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. today comes from the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they had any need. 
And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading, the epistle reading, comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. This is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but are now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Spirit, 
the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue now with the hymn of the day, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, hymn number 709. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome once again to Good Shepherd Sunday, the very familiar Psalm 23, so often recited at times of loss and sadness, is really meant to be a, a psalm of strengthening and encouragement, as is today's gospel where Jesus, speaking to his disciples, points out rather definitively that he is the door to the pasture. He is the door to the 
the path to peace and safety and love. And that is the point of this morning's message, follow the leader, that we have a leader. We have a leader that we are called to follow. And if you know anything about uh, sheep or farming um, or animal care, you know that sheep, rather unfortunately for us who have to identify with them, uh, are not entirely bright animals. They can easily be led astray. And so Jesus, speaking very poignantly to the potential of, of being led astray, he says that anyone who enters the sheep pen from any other way than through the gate is a thief and a robber. Certainly they don't have the best interest of the sheep at heart, for the, the gate would be somewhere in wide open view, a place where people could easily come to and go, where all of the sheep could flow freely in and out. But somebody entering from any other position really has no intention of, of being with or caring for the sheep in mass. They're there for their own reasons, their own, their own motivations. This is true in our own life. We are part of a larger community that is called to to follow our leader, to share in the life and the, the suffering and the blessings of Jesus Christ who leads us to eternal life, peace, and safety. But we are as, we are as apt to uh, hear from uh, those who would dissuade us and misguide us as, as anyone out there. Now, of course, we as humans and not physical sheep are certainly much more uh, bright and capable of discerning right and wrong than a mere animal can. But that doesn't change the fact that we have the ability to be misguided. And so Jesus speaks very clearly to his disciples and says, look, my sheep know my voice and they will follow me. They'll not respond to a stranger. They'll flee from a stranger for they don't know that voice. I think it's very appropriate to make the comparison between uh, parent and child. There are any number of times where I've addressed my children by their first name, um, and there are other times when I might use their entire name, <laughs> first, middle, and last. And, and often the tone changes as well. But my children know the difference between when I'm calling them uh, in, a, uh, in a tone of compassion and, and, uh, and gentleness, and one which is maybe a little more direct uh, and severe, uh, as is often the case, and, and I think everybody can relate to, you know, calling somebody by their full name, you know, Jonah Elliott Santos, get over here, you know, and I, I apologize for using him as an example. But, uh, but he's the most readily available. That's an example of us knowing our shepherd's voice. And, and Jesus wants us to be reminded of that, that the only way in which we can respond to him and be led to the pasture of peace and safety through the dangers of this life is to know his voice, to be able to clearly discern between God's truth and the falseness that is offered to us by the world. See, the falseness is represented by the one who enters the sheep pen from another way, outside of, or I should say, a, a, aside of the gate. That person is subject to the law. That person who enters the sheep pen for the, the purposes of harming the sheep, misguiding them, stealing them, uh, taking them away in any physical or emotional way, God's law will be there for that person. 
For when you take someone from the Lord's flock, Scripture tells us that He will search out that one. He will leave the 99 to go and find the one. That's the essence of the Good Shepherd. He is one who leads and who guides and who saves. In Psalm 23, He provides for us a bountiful table before the, before the presence of our enemies. He provides for us. He anoints our head with oil. He guides and leads us in every physical and spiritual manner. That is the Good Shepherd. Anything other than that is not good, right? People will say, hey, how are you doing today? Well, not bad. That means you're good. Right? In yesterday's phone message, I commented the idea that we can reflect on things and accept them uh, in terms of our, our life experiences, either good or we can leave our focus somewhere else. In today's gospel, Jesus is reminding the disciples and us to focus on the good. That which the good shepherd does. That which is God's mercy. For if we were to enter the sheep pen through another way other than the gate, but while being part of the flock, come to an understanding as to who Jesus is, come into a knowledge of the real truth of the Good Shepherd, well then we could just as much become part of God's sheep as anyone who had entered through the door. And so God's mercy then and his provision for us is just as great as those who are first called by his name. Jesus calls us by name because the Good Shepherd knows all of us by name. Since our conception, we've never been outside the vision of God. We've never been outside his broad arms to be able to bring us back, to carry us through the difficulty of this life and bring us to a pasture. Pastures are places of, of abundant food. Those which are secure from invaders on the sides. Places where we can rest, relax, eat, be refreshed without any fear of what's going on around us. We can be that way, in that place, because of the Good Shepherd. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. Jesus is the gate through which we enter into the altar of God. The one who, in our presence, will break bread and feed us from his own body and quench our thirst with his own living water. Enjoy this Good Shepherd Sunday. Reflect on God's love for you and trust in his word to lead you, to guide you, and give you peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now with the playing of our offertory.
Join me now as we recite the prayers of the church. And before I begin, um, I want to just remind everyone that though some of our prayers are pre-planned in advance of this service, uh, know that in our hearts and in our minds we should be reflecting on those family members who are currently suffering uh, from various ailments, not the least of which is the coronavirus. Uh, Betty Crispy, a long-term member of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, has been call, called home to glory just yesterday, Saturday evening, and uh, we we thank the Lord that she is with him now uh, in his glory, resting in his pasture and receiving her reward for a life of faithfulness to him. And for all the others that are in your hearts and in your minds, know that those prayers and concerns can be shared with us uh, in advance of service to be prayed uh, accordingly with the prayers of the church. Bidden by our shepherd, let us come before his throne of grace in prayer on behalf of all people according to their needs. Blessed shepherd, you established your church with your sacrificial death and mighty resurrection. Grant us devotion that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all enemies of your word and keep us within your care care of your flock and your staff forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Shepherd, you love the world enough to shed your blood and, your and you desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Inspire and equip your church and her ministers to speak faithfully and boldly your word and bless all those who serve us on behalf of you. Bless, we pray, Synod President Matthew Harrison, Bishop Derek McCakes, Serving Visitor Charles Byer. Please bless our church council, our board of deacons, and all the leaders of our congregation. May your Holy Spirit continue to guide them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Shepherd, you have clothed us with Christ's righteousness and taught us to love all that is good, right, and true. Bless all artists and artisans, composers and musicians and craftsmen and writers, that they may employ all their skills for your glory in their service to the gospel, and that the arts may testify to your saving death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Shepherd, your wounds are our healing, and your voice calls to us, calls us to you in time of need. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind, whose grief, who grieve those whom they love, and to whom death draws near. We pray especially for those in our hearts and in our minds, and whose names we lift up to you now. Grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, and hope of the new and everlasting life to come. Be with the unemployed and the distraught, and return them to health and livelihood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Shepherd, you seek out those who have fallen and restore the sinner to repentance. Send forth your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who have fallen away from the truth or who have been overcome by temptation and sin. Move our hearts to such devotion and teach us such generosity that we may bring to you the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart and serve our neighbor in need with the resources you have supplied to us so abundantly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember our first responders, our medical professionals, and all those who are working to keep our nation safe. 
We lift up the names of our active military members, Patrick, Kelly, Adam, Joseph, Ryan, Robert, Amber, Ashley, Lauren, Josh, Nicole, and Jonathan. For these and all others who serve, watch over them, protect them, and bring them home soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, O Lord, we commend to you all those for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. for you in preparation for an opportunity to begin worshiping, worshiping in person here in church. The church council along with the deacons and, and the leaders of the congregation have been uh, assembling a set of rules and um, specifications in keeping with the federal and state guidelines for assembly as a group. I will be sending out a special phone call message, preparing you with the very basic information in advance of a phone call to you by your respective deacon 
which will include uh, just a series of questions, understanding which services you may be inclined to return to uh, in terms of time, so that we can assess how many additional services, if any, are needed to accommodate everyone safely with the appropriate distancing and uh, safety precautions put into place. So please be aware of that. That phone call will arrive earlier in a day upcoming as opposed to the typical phone call in the afternoon. Thank you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.